So in this video, we're going to go over mod doing regression modeling with the natural logarithm, so logarithmic uh, regression models. So the key thing to recognize when you look at the natural logarithm, the function model starts off growing quickly, the outputs grow quickly, but the growth rate decreases so that the graph goes up less steeply as you move out towards infinity. And depending on how I scale the axis, depending on how the axis is scaled, you can get something that looks like it grows really fast out of the gate and then slows, uh, slows down over time. And so with the, with the logarithmic model, when you do your scatter plot, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a growth that starts fast and then starts to decline. It looks like it's plateauing. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times, models that can be modeled with a natural logarithm function can be better modeled with what's called a logistic model. Um, we're not going to go over the logistic model this semester, but if you go on into calculus, that's a model that you will develop and use in Calc 1 and again in differential equations depending on what your major is. So again, natural logarithm, we're looking for fast or rapid growth initially and then declining growth over time. So here I have a here I have a model, or sorry, here I have a data set. So this is modeling video game revenue. So think about what happens when a video game is released. If the video game's popular, you sell a lot of them right out of the gate. In fact, people will fight each other at Walmart and Target. They'll beat each other up trying to get a copy of the latest and greatest video game if it's one that's been highly anticipated. So with a, with a video game, what you expect is on the release date, that first year, you expect tremendous sales. And you're going to continue to sell that video game, that particular video game, as time goes by. People are still going to buy it. But the cumulative sales totals, the bulk of it's going to happen in the first year and then sales will slow down so that you're adding each year to the total sales at a slower and slower rate. So if, if we uh, plot this in a scatter plot, what we're going to see is that we get a model that could potentially be modeled with the natural logarithm. So if we're going to model this, what we want to remember is that with the scatter plots, we don't want to do the year versus the output. We set the first year usually, and we're going to see that there's there's going to be a hiccup with this, but we usually set the first year to time equal to zero. So you usually do time, and then you do since the beginning, since 2000. Let's expand this out so we can fit it in. So the first year, you set it to the beginning, so it's time equals zero, years since 2000. Um, we don't want to use the year itself as the input, it generates unwieldy and hard to interpret models. And then what we want to do is get years since 2000, so I can take 2001, so I can take this, so we'll do this with the formula, I can put equals, equals, take the year and subtract with the subtraction sign from the first year, which is 2000. So take the year minus 2000, enter, to give you the number of years since 2000. And then what you can do is drag that formula through so that it uh, is applied to each of the years. So to do that, you click back into the cell that you just typed the formula into. You hover over the corner. See where the little square box is in the corner? You hover, you left click and hold, and then you drag the formula through and it counts up. So 2010 minus 2000 is 10. This is 10 years since 2000. So when we do the scatter plot, we're going to use time since 2000 as the independent variable, and the dependent variable will be cumulative total, uh, uh, total sales of the video game. So this is counting how many games have been sold, not how much money we made by selling them. So again, once you highlight your data, input column first, output column second, insert, insert, scatter plot, do not connect the dots. So scatter plot. And what we'll see is we get that quick initial burst and then total sales starts to 
moderate over time as fewer and fewer people each year buy new copies of that game. So before we uh, put a regression model in, we want to make sure that we modify the layout. So I'm going to go into my quick layout and make sure I can put axes on. So my chart title will be cumulative video game sales for whatever the video game is that we're modeling. If I knew the name of the video game I was modeling, I would put that in there. My input axis is going to be time. And this is years since 2000. My vertical axis is cumulative sales and that number if I look back at the column that number was in thousands make sure that yeah sales in thousands I don't need this little series piece here so I get my titles in and now I'm ready to fit my regression line so I'm gonna left click on any point right click add trend line and it's definitely not linear. You can see the linear, which is the default, doesn't fit the data very well. In fact, if we fit the R squared to it, it's 0.8935. So a, a decent fit, but definitely not that good. So let's get rid of that linear trend line, right click, add trend line. It's definitely a logarithmic shape. The problem is if I try to add a logarithmic model right now, the, the Excel is going to complain. So I try to add the model and it says, hey, some trend lines cannot be calculated from data containing negative or zero values. And the issue here is our first data point is time equal to zero, but the domain of the natural log function is that the inputs have to be greater than zero. So I can't use zero as an input. So what I need to do is make an adjustment. So even though we usually set the beginning to zero, this is the case where we'll set the beginning to one. We'll say 2000 is the first year of, the sa of sales. And we make this adjustment so that we can use a logarithmic model. So usually the beginning is zero. Here's where we're going to need to make an exception. And then what I'm going to have to do is double click into one of my cells and say, hey, I was using the formula A4 minus 2000. I have to tweak things by adding one to each data point. I added one to the zero to get one in this first slot. So I need to add one to each data point. So I do it in the first cell I had the formula in. Now I just hover over the bottom right hand corner till I get the crosshairs left click hold, drag that formula through, and notice that the trend line now has been added in. I wanted to add that logarithmic trend line. Now Excel has done it. So I'm gonna right click, add trend line, and make sure I display my equation and R squared value on the chart. Whoops, I gotta, I gotta, I accidentally added a linear trend line, which you can see doesn't fit the data very well. So go back, right click, add trend line, make sure logarithmic is selected, and now add the R squared and equation to the chart. Close that out. And just like usual, you'd wanna clean your chart up, so I like getting rid of those grid lines. That's just a personal preference. I usually copy and paste this out into its own text box, so I do Control X to cut it and then insert text, text box, click somewhere in the chart, control V to paste. I'm gonna highlight it and go alt equals to change it over to the math type or the math font. Get rid of the extra spacing and give myself good var variable names. This is sales, total sales as a function of time and my input variable is time. And now I have to change this a little bit. Time, down here, this title, time, year since 2000, I have to change this. So one, 
one represents uh, year one is 2000. So the, the reader needs to know what the numbers on that axis mean. I have one, two, three, four, what do they mean? Year one is 2000 and hopefully they'll know from that that then year two is 2001 and so on and so forth. So there, there it is and I could ask all the usual questions. I'm not going to but we could ask all the usual questions. What's the domain of the model? What's the range of the model? We can use the model to make, inter, uh, to make predictions and those are all things that we've already walked through with exponential models, quadratic models, and linear models. So the same types of thinking and techniques that we've been using for those three other types of models, you apply those same types of thinking and techniques to the logarithmic model as well.